a uh, couple of spiral bevel gears meet like that this was the first one the customer had brought to us um, I didn't expect the other one to look good and it does not um, so but I had told him that if need be we would somehow make this one if absolutely need be and uh, that we he did not want to pay us to make two of them because it was just way too much money our CNC machine that actually would be able to do this with a little ball mill and it's got the conversational programming and everything. We kicked it out last week. <laughs> actually, maybe two weeks ago or so. Um, we gave up on it. Not as far as giving up on it because it wouldn't work. We gave up on it because this is the first job we've had that needed uh, that much of a complex geometry. So we would have done this with manual machines and you go oh manual well they did it with manual machines years ago uh, we could do it you have to gear your dividing head to your milling machine you have to set an angle on it it gets complicated and you also have to have this going at a taper so i really didn't want to do it and what we found instead they're rated for the same torque as what this should take we found another set of standard gears and we will modify the gearbox to take these, which is the most practical. We also, however, did talk to other gear shops about the possibility of just making these correct gears for us. And it wasn't a matter of price. It was basically a matter of the nice gear shops with their CNC machines. If I wasn't ordering 50 to 100 of these, they didn't want it. And they said that was their sweet spot. The big boys that most of the CNC machinists out there watching this will be working for probably make several thousand of these at a time and wouldn't even talk to people for a hundred years because they were considering that a small run. Um, yeah, they didn't even really want to make one. Um, there's probably somebody out there with a CNC that would have done this as a one-off, but by the time I'd send it to you, try, you know, it, and making two of them, it made more sense to buy a replacement gears. We've obviously, these are already hardened. We're going to have to use CBN, increase the bore diameter. We probably will not have a square cut key in it when we're done. We'll probably have a rounded key because of the tooling available that's gonna cut through the hard material. But we haven't quite come to that point yet. We haven't designed out exactly where those are gonna set. Um, we're waiting on the flange, which claims it's available. This one here, which needs to come too. And I think we're going to end up building it because I think they lied to everybody when they said it was in stock. Now all of a sudden it shows up as back ordered. So I think we're going to do a regroup on that and be making other parts for this non-obtainable gearbox also. So, but that was a job that uh, the CNC would have been really good for if we had it in here. Uh, it's not worth bringing it back in for that. And even if it was, it's just, it's easier to make make a whole nother set of gears that's available, already ground, precision, um, than to make one. Um, anyway, it's, uh, the jobs that are available really decide what you're gonna work on and what you're gonna do. Um, I guess being in Fairbanks, Alaska and having been around heavy equipment, farming, older equipment, things in days where it was common when I started in this trade where I've done production work, but also most of my work has been dealing with rep repair, replacement parts, emergency things, and people wanting to keep 50 year old machinery running. Not 10 or 20, 50 year old machinery running. When I was first in this, people were actually, for pipeline construction, using equipment that was built in the 30s, some of it. So it, it was a different world. Nonetheless, today, there's a lot of what I do still is involved with the people that have a 30-year-old machine of some sort, and they want parts for it that aren't available. They consider 30 years old with the rest of it having low time on it, something broke they consider it worth putting money into instead of drop kicking it and buying a new one. It's just a different attitude. Um, and we really don't do much. We do some production, you know, we did those impeller locks. That's short, short run production. 
But most of what we do is uh, one, two, 50 pieces. Um, and that dictates what machines make sense. <laughs>